Hello, it's uh, Dr. Kevin Herman uh, here uh, to talk about uh, this month's case. Um, I'm a vascular interventional radiologist as part of American Endovascular and Amputation Prevention, and we really do try to save limbs that others cannot. So we'll jump right into the case here with a patient history and initial consultation. It's a 95-year-old female who had recent onset of painful left heel ulceration. She's a non-ambulatory patient. She is awake, alert, and oriented times three and is conversant. She is wheel wheelchair dependent, but she's able to transfer. That's a key component in trying to perform limb salvage in the elderly patient. Specifically, there's a patient coming from the skilled nursing facility, uh, part of a uh, joint program we have with the wound care uh, team taking care of this patient. And it's a very uh, good relationship whereby they're able to identify the wounds and provide for quick, immediate vascular consultation in the facility uh, as well with the proper workup. And then we're able to uh, bring the patient if needed for a uh, minimally invasive procedure. Her past medical history includes deep vein thrombosis, peripheral arterial disease, congestive heart failure, atrial fibrillation, hypertension, gastritis, dysphagia, arthritis, and weakness. But her specific uh, problem is this left heel ulceration uh, that is painful and uh, we need to take care of that. So the plan after the initial arterial imaging was performed at the facility, which did identify arterial uh, disease, uh, we did recommend some blood work, basic blood work to be performed, a discussion with the family and with the patient itself. Um, and, and specifically in this patient, uh, she is uh, completely awake and alert and oriented. Um, we we're also planning to perform our chill imaging at our center. Once it was determined that she would likely be going for an angiogram, uh, we do have some other capabilities at the center besides the more basic imaging that can be performed at the facility for uh, good triage, and then we'll perform the angiogram. Her initial treatment at the facility was IV antibiotics, specifically meropenem, which is a broad spectrum antibiotic. Uh, perform antiplatelet uh, treatment and continue with her current medical management for her um, multi-factor uh, diseases. Same day arterial imaging which performed at our center did give us a good clue as to what was going on, which was pretty much she had no flow uh, down through uh, the femoral popliteal segment, as you could see here on the ultrasound imaging, no arterial color flow there. There was a small area of what we call focal island or reconstitution um, of the blood vessels. So we knew that we would have a fighting chance to try to revascularize uh, the patient. And distally, our ultrasound technologist actually was able to really help us out um, uh, with uh, detailing the vasculature that was open, but was very tortuous uh, at that time and would really help us out in, in terms of our procedure. So the initial angiogram uh, was performed on uh, May 5th, 2022. And you can see here in the initial uh, image on the left, uh, the femoral popliteal segment open proximally, but as we go down toward the leg, it becomes non-existent. And there is a complete occlusion below. You see the next image here, where there are just these little focal island, which we saw in the ultrasound, in this segment right over here. And collateral uh, vasculature seen, uh, providing enough blood flow to keep the lower extremity warm and not to have acute limb ischemia, but she has real severe critical limb threatening ischemia with almost no direct line uh, blood flow down to the foot. So we knew how we had our work cut out for us on this initial uh, intervention. And during that treatment, we were actually able to get our wires and catheters uh, down through the native superficial femoral artery which is noted here and down into the popliteal artery. And this is, you could see the knee here. And this is after we performed a balloon angioplasty at that location. And it does show some dissection, uh, which was causing flow limitation. And in order to improve that, we did perform a stent to really perform a good scaffolding uh, in order to provide for good blood flow going down towards the foot. Uh, most importantly, as you can see actually in this last image here is that tortuosity that we were talking about that we saw and we knew that was going to potentially be a problem. And so we really did not want to uh, touch that area because it did have some blood flow. But the, basically at the end of that uh, exam, we were really able to have good blood flow going down towards uh, the top of the foot. 
But if you look here, this is something called angiosomes, where we have blood vessels that go down to different levels of the foot and the leg and the blood supply that's important to what we call revascularize those specific areas in order to provide better blood flow. So for example, if you look at this patient's wound, although we were able to revascularize what we call the anterior tibial artery, and it was going to provide some collateralized flow, it was not gonna necessarily be direct flow. And this is the outer aspect of her heel uh, right over here. And if you look on this cartoon image, the perineal artery, which was a, which is one of the tibial blood vessels that go down towards the foot, happens to be occluded or blocked in her case. And we're our plan, and that's why we call this case the second look or rationale for second look to really see what was happening with the very diseased blood vessels that uh, we were able to revascularize and did it recruit more blood vessels? Did the area that we fixed is it staying open? Is it improving the blood flow overall? And our second plan would then be to go ahead and try to revascularize uh, an additional blood vessel uh, in this patient that may provide better blood flow to that area. So this is using angiosome or angiographosome is what we call in order to really uh, target our intervention in order to provide better blood flow. So as you could see here, uh, this is the angiogram at the second look where we now have the superficial femoral artery above going into the popliteal artery now, which was the area that we had treated uh, a few weeks prior to these images being taken. And we're very pleased with the blood vessel looking as nice and open, no residual disease uh, present at all in that location. And we're very uh, pleased with that result thus far. You can see this initial blood vessel, that anterior tibial artery, which goes toward the top of the foot, uh, is revascularized and looks even better than it did uh, post the initial uh, procedure. But you can see in this location here, which is the takeoff to the, what we call the tibial perineal trunk, which would eventually uh, bifurcate or uh, go into a posterior tibial artery, which goes towards the back of the leg, or the perineal artery, which is really the blood vessel that we wanted to try to revascularize for this patient. And if you note here on this last picture, there is, although there's excellent blood flow to the top of the foot, you do see that there's a lack of blood supply to the area that is directly by the wound. Now these collaterals will be helpful and will help improve, but I think that we could try to do uh, even better. And so at the second look intervention, that's exactly what our plan was. As you can see here, this was that initial picture that we took after the first intervention. And now we have a wire catheter, and now we have that balloon going down through that occluded perineal artery. And I, I wanted to show you this image because specifically we have this wire tip right here going down exactly to the location, uh, as you saw on that cartoon image, which will really provide the better blood flow towards that heel in order to uh, heal that wound. Here was our initial angiogram from the first uh, intervention showing the paucity of blood supply. Here is the angio at the second look before we even went ahead and tried to uh, fix the tibial perineal trunk. So that initial intervention was still up, but we did need to see some more work. Here are before and after clinical images with two week progression showing the wound almost completely healing and closing down much less pain. Initial, after the first intervention, and now here, two weeks after the third intervention, excuse me, the second intervention, whereby we're able to get some good blood supply toward that lateral heel using uh, the angiosome or angiographosome concept as demonstrated earlier. So the second look, that's a, um, something that we've been working on. We're gonna to try to collect some data within our own center. Um, and what's really important about it is that after providing for the first intervention to see, is this a patient that's gonna be a candidate to try to revascularize in a planned way, a second intervention? But even more importantly, to see, did that first intervention really um, stick? Now we can follow that up with arterial imaging, but that doesn't always give us the exact information that we're looking for uh, on some of those branch vessels that may uh, be helping um, go to areas that it, we might not have thought they would be going. 
And if we have a plan to try to revascularize that second vessel, it really does give us uh, excellent information. Uh, there's also, uh, with our current program, a great ease of follow-up, whereby after performing uh, the initial intervention, especially patients in the uh, skilled nursing facility that we have this program running, we're able to have a physician assistant or nurse practitioner see those patients in close follow-up almost weekly, and then we can determine the need for that, what we call second look uh, angiogram. Thank you.